Keystone Species Keystone species are fundamental components of ecosystems as they help to maintain and balance their surrounding environment. To support most ecosystems, it is crucial for conservation efforts to be redirected with a greater focus towards protecting keystone species. Keystone species can directly affect and alter the population levels of other species as they aid in the transferring of energy and nutrients between trophic levels. Once removed from an ecosystem, the disappearance of keystone species can cause a collapse in the food chain. A drastic increase will occur in the population of species located in lower trophic levels due to their main predator no longer depleting their population. Fearing for the decreasing population of Cervus candidensis and other prey of the Canis lupus in the Yellowstone National Parks ecosystem, the federal government offered approximately $50 per wolf killed until 1965 in an attempt to protect the elk population. This led to an exponential growth in the population of elk as they were being targeted by less predators. However, this increased population did lead to the overgrazing of plants. Whereas species belonging to higher trophic levels will fall victim to a population decline as their prey has been stripped from their diet. This can be seen with the sinusoidal population cycle of the lynx canadensis and lupus americanus, oscillating every 10 years. The population of the lynx and the hare will both rise However, the lynx will perform this at a faster pace. The larger population of lynx will call for a greater demand of hares, but the hare population cannot match that of the lynx and will quickly fall. This will cause a decline in the population of the lynx as they are no longer able to have a steady supply of prey. However, keystone species are not always beneficial to an ecosystem as it can sometimes cause extinction and expiration, a form of local extinction, in neighboring species. The importance of protecting keystone species diminishes when the competition and predation from the keystone species begin to affect other species to the point that their population becomes at risk. An example of this can be seen with the Orchidentimulus rusticulus in many lakes across the northern regions of North America. Rusty crayfish are known to outcompete smaller crayfish for food, which causes them to develop at a much faster rate. This leads them to grow to a size that small mouth bass are no longer able to eat them. Rusty crayfish also have a harder shell, making it difficult for fish to prey on them compared to smaller crayfish. Under these circumstances, resources will be required to relocate to help sustain the population of both keystone and surrounding species in the environment. A potential solution to a problem would be to designate individual areas for both the species at risk and the keystone species, as this separation will allow for the population of both to recover. Introducing an alternative food source for ecosystems being affected by predation will also allow for the population to return to a stable condition. Elk in the Yellowstone National Parks ecosystem have been known to overgraze particular plants, but by introducing another food source, it will present those plants with time to recover. Although the castor canadensis has positive impacts on specific aspects of their environment as they are needed in order to allow ecosystems to survive, they have many negative and devastating effects on other aspects, as well as several human applications through the making of their dams, including flooding farmlands and damming water used for hydroelectricity. Beavers are among the few species besides humans that can significantly change their geomorphology and consequently the hydrological characteristics and biotic properties of the landscape. Dams are able to change entire ecosystems, such as from aquatic to terrestrial, and although this change is attractive for some species as it increases heterogeneity, habitat, and species diversity at the landscape scale, it causes detrimental impacts to other species and surrounding environments. Beavers are adaptable, 
as they are able to inhabit numerous different environments, including glacier outwash streams, deserts, and boreal forests. In order to create a solution to the numerous negative impacts beavers have on humans, many provinces have put bounties on beavers in order to regulate the beaver populations. A current successful implementation of the bounty program is taking place in Northwest Territories. The government and community have been increasing support of programs such as training programs, take a kid trapping programs, and collective tanning and meat processing efforts in order to decrease the number of beavers in their area. The current bounty of the beavers is $100, though it must be proven that the beaver is being used, either by bringing in the skull, castor sacs, and baculum, if male, as well as a stretched beaver hide or packed meat. This is because dumping the beaver carcass is considered wastage and is illegal under the Wildlife Act. This means that despite the death of the beaver, it can still be used for various purposes by humans. In order to create an ethical and useful solution in order to decrease the population of beavers, it is important to recognize the importance of the species and its positive impacts in comparison to their negative, as well as recognize the beaver inhabitants of the land prior to humans. However, due to the disadvantages of beavers and their negative impact on humans, the current bounty solution seems to be a viable and successful solution.